um, today I'll be talking about the um, really awesome aspects of the pop art era and how Andy Warhol and his 32 Campbell soup cans played into that. So Andy Warhol's 32 Campbell soup cans are a very prominent um, example of art in the pop art era, era, era um, because his works included um, depiction of commonplace items, like shown in the Campbell soup can, those were very commonplace items, every household had them. Um, the repetition of the image, um, it was meant to signify the lack of variety in everyday life, and that was one of the big aspects of the pop art era, and I think one of the big um, sort of trends in the pop art era is um, the lack of variety in everyday life. Um, it had clearly defined separation between colors, you can see between the white and the red in the Campbell soup can, there's a very clear defined line. Um, it used um, red, blues, and yellows. That was a big trend in the pop art area. A lot of art used red, blues, and yellows. Um, it de depicted a brand name item without technically endorsing it. So that was a big thing in the pop art era too. Um, a lot of artists had brand name items, but they didn't endorse them. So that was um, a way to get around having to for the use of the item. Um, and then there was also words included in the artwork. That was a new thing in the pop art era, um, which is really evident in this um, example. So political and societal trends of the pop art era included the civil rights movement, John F. Kennedy's assassination, the Vietnam War, um, the shooting of Andy Warhol, and then the challenging of societal norms. So a big, um, a a big trend in the pop art era was the challenging of societal norms, which a lot of artists did in their very expressive um, artwork that was very new and very different than the era before. Um, There's a lot of things going on politically, like John F. Kennedy's assassination and the Vietnam War, and a lot of artists were using those events in their artwork, um, which was also kind of a new trend. Um, people have been using, been painting and doing art from things they've seen. Um, but forever, but in the pop art era, a lot of the art was a little bit more um, controversial based on the political and societal trends. So a lot of these things were seen in artwork and they weren't always just an um, innocent painting of something. It was normally, um, there's normally very deep meaning to the artist's depiction of these events. Um, so, so to go along with the art in the pop art era, there was also a musical style. Um, the Velvet Underground and Nico's I'm Waiting for the Man was a very good example of music in the pop art era. Um, it was challenging societal norms. It depicted the use of drugs, which were commonly known about at the time, so that's the commonplace item from the pop art. Um, it conveyed a message through lyrics. It's a very strong message about the use of drugs and um, challenging of societal norms about the um, use of drugs, um, so that was really interesting. Um, and then it also advertised drugs without promote, promoting them necessarily. Um, so that was, those are three very good examples of why this piece of music um, exemplified and had the characteristics of the pop art. Um, and then the literature style of this era also um, mirrored the art style of the pop art era, and this was this era lasted from about the late 1940s until the late 1960s, give or take a little bit, there's kind of a gray line. Um, but art and literature and music kind of started to gravitate towards this um, challenging of societal norms, um, using commonplace items in the art um, in a very different style, like kind of towards the 1940s into the 1950s and was in um, full swing by the late 1950s into the 1960s. Um, so this literature style, um, Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451 was a very good example of um, literature in the pop art era. It challenged the norms of society. So in his book, he was the only, um, the main character in the book was the only person who really um, understood the value of books as they were all kind of being burned if they weren't what society wanted. Um, so it conveyed a strong message throughout the book. Um, so he, the main character had to find his way and navigate his way through a society for which he was very different. Um, so that was a very strong message. Um, and then another um, aspect of the pop art era is that some of the art, literature, and music had a very small cult following in the early years of it. Um, and that's 
shown in Fahrenheit 451, it really didn't become very popular until after the pop art era. So during the pop art era, it had a very small cult following, um, and that is a very big um, telltale sign of something from the pop art era. Um, so in conclusion, art, literature, and music um, shared very strong traits during the pop art era that make them art, music, and literature of the pop art era. Um, those include challenging of the society, norms of society, depicting commonplace items, advertising um, products without promoting them, um, conveying strong messages, having a cult following, um, all of those things. Um, so thank you.